A wise quote once said that, well, um, if death is the only answer, right? If death is the hunter, right? Why would we struggle to teach people that death is a horrible thing? Because there was a wise quote that also said, if you seek an answer, look beyond your shoulder and ask your death. Now we're too busy in this society teaching people that, you know, death is a horrible thing. We all know that death is only a horrible thing for narcissistic people. And people who have an, you know, super big ego, because people who have a super big ego, they believe they are entitled to everything. They believe they are perfect. And the problem is when death arrives, well, it will take every bit of perfection that they are, right? So death is an affront to them. If you look into religion, you are born a sinner, right? You are not worthy of pre perfection, right? But what was perfection built, right? As it was built as a man. Well, if we look at history and how things have been up till now, you'll see that monotheist religions have been always governed by men. So it, was, it is only obvious that monotheist religions will have a man as a representative. I'm not saying it's a bad thing necessarily, but when you disregard the feminine side of our race, well, the only thing left for you is to become a conqueror. Because through the male aspect, you'll seek to conquer, subjugate. What have, been, what have religions been doing? Well, subjugating people. How have they been, well, ruling you? Fear of death. Why? Because the fear of death is the only thing that these people who have created the religions can give you. Because they're fucking narcissists, right? They have created God as a perfect vision of themselves. Because a narcissist, after all, a narcissist can only accept a greater vision of themselves as something being superior to them. Because ultimately it is the way they would envision them that they would sooner or later become, right? Because if they think they're perfect, when they look in the mirror, they will see themselves as something even more perfect, right? So, the way this idea of Christianity, right? The gods, right? This monotheist religion's god is always a man because, well, the woman is the gender that is harder to understand. And the male energy seeks to control. It seeks rigidity. Feminine side is not rigid because it doesn't have a shape. But not having much of a shape means that it can be shaped into anything. That is why the feminine energy is, you know, easier to bend around. It is easier to create shapes out of it. It is easier to form in a certain way. Now, it should always be used as something that would, you know, highlight uh, problems in society so that they can be solved through a more uh, gentle approach, let's say. But when it comes to rigidity, right? Rigidity means structure. All structures have their end. But narcissists cannot appreciate the end. Because the end is basically, more or less, as older civilizations also said, it is also the end of all physical suffering. Because you are no longer suffering before you are dead. But religion says that if you are bad, aka you are not the perfect puppet for this world, for those who, you know, rule you and want to rule you, well, they are going to suffer eternally, right? In a place called hell. Now, I'm sure monotheist religions have this idea, right, of duality, the perfect heaven, right, the perfect place, aka heaven, and the worst place possible, which is, well, nothing else than a place of pain. But people, if we look in medieval times, especially in Europe, they have been living in horrible conditions, right, and they have been conditioned to live so, and embrace a fear of this God, right, that is, uh, you know, how do people end it up? Uh, you know, fearing these gods, right? Because I was amused in a way when I saw that, you know, the greatest fear in this world of people, of humans all around, is the fear of gods. Because they feel that they are useless, right? But it's not you that you would feel that you are useless. It's those narcissists who created these fucking religions. Because they feel they are useless. After all, a narcissist and such people become 
So, they believe that they are useless because of countless weeks, months, years of abuse from parents, right? And obviously, not a single life. Most likely, they had multiple lives in which they were brutally, you know, emotionally tortured and such. So, whatever religion sends you is not yours. You only accept it, right? It is only the belief of other people that you accept. Because when you are born, you are born nothing. You didn't have any belief. All of these beliefs you accept. So these people need a sense of perfection, right? So they created this idea of God that they theoretically worship. But that idea of God was born out of a feeling of uselessness, right? Because after all, the narcissistic people are the most miserable people ever. Because as I've been envisioning them, they are nothing else than a shuttle desperately trying to escape the pool of a black hole. And the black hole is they who they are. But they believe they are the shuttle. So this is that horrible thing that, you know, will take every bit of perfection from them. So they will fear it constantly. It is their greatest fear after all. So the point is, that is the only thing that they actually can give you. The fear of death, right? They are actually teaching you how they feel, how they are, how they perceive the world. Because they per perceive this world as perfection. This God that they created, right? Long, long ago when Christianity was born. And, well, Christianity is one of the newest religions after all, right? There are further monotheist religions. And obviously, they will have a man as a God, right? They don't have a goddess. They have a God. I am not speaking about sexism and such. Because obviously, monotheist religions will be born out of patriarchy. Now, well, they can also be born out of a matriarchy but the point is when you have a monotheist religion that religion only exists through male energy which is control and rigorosity right it doesn't matter whether the uh, designer of this god right of this single deity is a woman or a man some religions might actually have had a female god a single god but a female right we may no longer know about this because obviously if you have a female god it's a bad thing and well history can't record literally everything because well simply nations can instantly perish and well documents may simply just perish with them we don't know the entire history of this world we only have a simple idea about certain things based on writings done by people in the past but writings well they most likely have been subjective so technically we can't say that we actually know the history of this world for sure so the point about this is this is well just a simple end but we are so interested in teaching people that death is a horrible thing and you know only this uh, certain deity is the only one that simply transcended death and the such but let's ask ourselves one thing let's say that starting from tomorrow no one no one on this planet will ever believe in God or in Allah, or any of these monotheist religion deities. Are they still alive? Hmm? Are they still alive? Most of, well, most importantly for us, no. Because if none of us will be thinking of them, it's like they have never existed, right? So to our perception, they have never existed. To our perception, God also never existed until they were created and presented to us, right? Because in order for a God, to exist in our um, awareness, let's say. They have to be created. Or they have to be seen. But you can't count on people to tell you that, you know, they have seen something. Because humanity has lived in ignorance for up till now. And ignorant people have an unhinged imagination. When your imagination is not limited, well, that is technically the best thing. Because you can technically create anything. And if you're also more or less literate, you can actually use that for certain purposes, like, I don't know, painting or whatever. But an unhinged imagination is also, in a way, bad, because whatever new someone would present, your imagination would vividly create before you. The problem is, when you are not capable of discerning in between reality and imagination, well, the problem is you'll simply, like, instantly be hooked into that. If it is made in, especially if it is made in a way that you'd truly embrace it, right? So, when you end up like that, you will easily end up believing in something that you think is real. But it's not necessarily, right? Because our perception 
comes based off of our physical perception, right? Because we give all of our attention almost to our senses and to our minds and to our logics and, well, emotions and the such. So if these things are more important to us, then we will simply believe in anything that is apparently supported by that. You haven't seen God, someone spoke to you about that, but your imagination not being, well, let's say, structured enough, right? Like, uh, you know, Stoicists would. Because a Stoic pe person would tell you, hey, you know what, screw you with your God, right? Like, why would I actually have to believe in that, right? Scientific people would also tell you, well, well, where's the scientific proof, right? Imagination is good, but don't embrace it as a true reality, because that's a bit of psychiatry, right? And we know the border in between reality and psychiatry is fear, because fear is the most common emotion that we give in to, right? Because fear is also an imagination. You embody a certain aspect that may happen in the future, but you never know if it actually will. And well, in some cases it may happen. But the point is, when you believe in things beyond reality as it truly is, well, that is a bit of psychiatry, right? So, the point about this, this will simply happen. If it is the only hunter, why bother losing your time, losing your life, you know, running away from it, fearing it, when you know it's the only thing that will happen in your life? Why not teach people? Why not teach people to simply focus on their life, on what they like instead? Oh, because if they would do so, they wouldn't be distractible, right? Because living in a constant fear of death already is a distraction which causes you pain. And when you are caused pain, you need distractions, right? Because medicine, well, medicine is, well, medicines are nothing else than distraction. They don't kill the pain, although they're killed, they're called painkillers, right? They don't kill the pain. They just numb the body down enough that you no longer feel it. The problem is still there, the disease is still there, but you simply took a pill and, you know, you took a painkiller and you no longer feel the pain. So you are, you know, well, you are now capable of becoming ignorant again, right? Because if the pain is no longer, you can simply commit self-destruction again, right? In most people's cases, obviously. So why not teach people that? This will simply come. People have to realize the, well, ephemerity of life. Because being told about death, well, death will always scare the mind. Death will always be feared by the physical mind. But the point is, if you transcend death, you will transcend most of the suffering the mind can create. Because when you create pain and suffering into you, well, you will need distractions from that, right? Because more pain, well, means a greater necessity for distractions, right? And distractions can lead you to a lot of destructive behaviors. And, well, many people will simply take, well, great pleasure in that, or they will take great advantage in that. Isn't this society, you know, kind of built around this? Because if we take a closer look around, if you are healthy, well, no one gives a damn about you. But if you are suddenly ill, all the doors of this world suddenly open to you. And there's so many treatments around. But they don't necessarily seem to simply, you know, fix your problems. And if society has so many ways of treating you, the point is, does this society actually care about you? Because all those treatments are so super expensive. They only seem to be made for the ones that actually rule the world, right? The ones who actually have the money, right? A.K.A. the narcissists who rule the world, because narcissists believe they are the most important, so if something catastrophical would happen, they are the only ones they would ever seek to save, right? Because they believe that they are the most important part of society. So things actually, if you think about this through introspection and death and the fear of death that they have, well, some people might think, aren't some of these, you know, narcissistic fuckers immortal in a way? Or capable of living thousands of years in a physical body through, you know, occult techniques? Well, if you live thousands of years in a physical body, imagine how much more pain you would go through, right? Because people simply live, they may live miserable lives, they will die, they are born in other bodies, and they don't remember anything about their previous lives, because nature has this protection for you. But imagine that you go through a hundred years of, let's say, poverty and sorrow, right? Many of us have gone through previous lives, and obviously there are still people who are like this, and you're not capable of making sense of anything happy in your life. 
So if you go further, well, you'll certainly die. But imagine that you have to go through a thousand years of this. Because these people who simply want, just like you can see nowadays in the whole world, they want authoritarianism, they want full control over anything and full separation, well, you can only think how miserable they can feel inside, right? If they even have an inside, if they, if they can even, you know, think about something inside, because you have to be fully impulse-based, right? Fully impulse-driven. So you simply don't exist when your impulses are far more important than you. It is a great thing that people are waking up. Because if you don't allow people to realize things, they will just live a superficial life. School is superficial because it doesn't allow you to realize anything. It just tells you that 2 plus 2 equals 4. I doubt many people actually realize that 2 plus 2 equals 4. They just use it mechanically. That's why everything in this world more or less seems superficial. Because there is no realization. If you realize things in life, if you spend some time going to a graveyard, for example, or to a burial mound, or to a kiln, right, a place where, you know, people are, you know, dead bodies are burnt. If you spend some time there, let's say, disregarding the horrible smells, or, well, the smells, some people may not be deranged by that, some people may find that horrible. Well, one day, at a certain moment, you'll have the realization that you will also end up there. So your life is not limitless, right? Your life, well, your life is limitless, but you are not, you know, outside of the boundaries of time. Because physicality means a bound, boundary of time. You only have a limited time. But no one teaches you that. Once you realize, not know. You don't need to know that you will die. You need to realize that death, that will happen. When death is the only hunter, again, why bother simply wasting life fearing it? Because we can teach people to simply make the best out of their life. Because it's limited. So, if people can make the best out of their life, they will simply transcend all the, um, you know, fears and suffering and the such. They will simply transcend that with no problem. Because that's how things are. If you learn how to do things, if you learn to transcend this limit these limitations of the mind, you will no longer create much sorrow in your life. And when that happens, your life will be freer and you will be more connected to divinity because you are no longer separating yourself through distractions. So when you do that, problems within you will start solving by themselves. If you are not wise enough to solve them consciously, they will solve them by themselves. It may take more time, it doesn't matter, but the point is, it is always better to simply leave this physical body in a much greater and more pleasant manner than when you came. Because you may not have consciously chosen your parents, but your karma did choose them for you. You may have had a horrible experience in your childhood, like most of us actually have. Most, I mean, few people ever escape from families unscathed, right? Most families are abusive because their parents have also been. But you still have the choice. Do you want to become wiser? and teach people to have better lives and transcend those limitations and those bad behaviors that were done against you? Or you choose to become hurt and perpetuate those, you know, um, pains. But you also have to realize that whatever you do also has a reaction. If you abuse other people, well, most likely you will be born in an abusive family. I'm not speaking about karma being a, you know, system of punishment and reward, but based on what your actions are, your karma is recorded, right? And it never fails. So sooner or later, we all will answer. You know, we all will go through um, the repercussions of our actions. Whatever we do now shall echo through eternity. Marcus Aurelius said, You're not probably going to answer for your sins to speak religiously in this life. But most likely in others, you will. So it is better that you purge as much as your karma, right? And live afterwards better lives. Because you may not know. You don't know what future lives will have. But at least you can make sure that they will be better. Because if you purge through your impulses, well, technically if you learn how to not take them into account, not ignore them, simply not take them into account through wisdom, right? Because once you realize also, once you realize, right? Again, I say realize. Once you realize the futility of your impulses and the fact that they are nothing else than a means of survival, you'll simply be much better. Much easy, you'll find it much easier to simply transcend them. The next time you're in a physical body, you may have forgotten what you have done, but the karma is still there. 
because the evolution that you have gone through through different physical bodies that you have embodied well that karma is still there so in f future lives you'll find it easier to regain this balance there will be things that will impulsively push you towards that right even if again you may find yourself in abusive families or in families who won't teach you how to reach your greater potential but those voices within you are still there right they those impulses right i call them voices of previous lives right in a poetic way but those karmic impulses right they are still guidance systems that's the point because the only thing they will be guiding you is towards liberation because liberation means ending this life in a conscious way right leaving your physical body in a conscious way because people simply leave this physical body in an unconscious way and that is why they are still trapped in this physicality once someone leaves their body in a physical in a conscious way that is when the game is over that is when life draws the line and says okay game over you have re-become one with creation all this being said you are appreciated take care have a happy new year and at least a more introspective and more prosperous one as well Ferenjan Bohr signing out <laughs>